antibodies are proteins produced by immune cells known as B lymphocytes, which are very specific in their ability to bind something which is foreign, uh, called the antigen. Antibodies can be produced which bind to the proteins of coronavirus. These antibodies can also then be used in testing for coronavirus. So for example, um, it would be possible to test directly for coronavirus in that a patient's sample uh, is provided and antibodies which have already been generated would then see if they could bind to something in that patient's sample. So if the patient had coronavirus and coronavirus was producing these foreign proteins, these factory manufactured antibodies could then recognize them and if the antibodies are attached to a specific enzyme a color molecule a chromogen could be added and if a patient's sample had coronavirus antigen in it the antibodies would have stuck the chromogen reacts with the enzyme and there is a color change which then can be used to recognize a positive result a more common version, however, is not directly looking for, say, coronavirus antigen, but rather indirectly detecting the presence of coronavirus by seeing if a patient is making antibodies against coronavirus. And so the test is not looking for the virus itself, but the antibodies that a patient would make if they were exposed to the virus. In this type of test, a simulated coronavirus antigen is present in the test kit. If a patient has antibodies against coronavirus antigen, they will stick to the coronavirus antigen in the test. And then a second antibody with which has the enzyme attached is added, but this antibody binds to antibodies that the patient might have produced against coronavirus. And then the resultant color change shows that the patient had antibodies against coronavirus, thus indirectly detecting the presence of coronavirus. Here is a simulation of a sample coronavirus test. One would first add a buffer this would dilute the patient's sample, allowing uh, their sample to move uh, through the test uh, materials, and also potentially control for pH, ion concentrations, and other aspects. It is very important to have checks in your procedure to make sure that your results are accurately displaying what they think they are. So here is what's known as a procedural control that if the test proceeds normally, say for example, there's enough uh, volume in the patient sample, then you should see a blue line turn red. If the blue line stays blue, you would discard the results of this test. Something went wrong and you know maybe you need to add more volume or check the solutions, etc. And so here's a procedural control that would then uh, inform you if the results cannot be accepted as valid. In addition to this procedural control, you would also want to run a negative control. So here is a sample which does not have antibodies for coronavirus. And your test result should then say that this sample is negative. It does not. If the test reads positive, that would then be a danger of what is called a false positive that you would potentially tell a patient that they have coronavirus when in fact they don't. And so you would run a negative troll control, something that you were expecting will give a negative result because it should give a negative result. If it gives a positive result, that's a problem, that's a false positive. In the same way, you would want to run a positive control. Here is a sample which should give positive results. Let's say in this case, for both types of antibody, IgM and IgG. You're expecting a positive result. If you do not get a positive result, if you get a negative result, that's a problem because the antibodies were present in your positive control. This would then be a false negative 
you don't want this. You don't want to have a patient who has antibodies against coronavirus and tell them that they don't. That would be a false negative. And so you run a positive control to make sure that your procedure will not give a false negative result. If all of our controls suggest that our uh, procedure is running properly, we could then test patient number one using either a blood sample, uh, say from a finger stick, or serum from uh, a, a blood uh, sample which was previously drawn. And if we see two red lines appear for IgM and IgG, this indicates that this patient has been exposed to coronavirus and is making both types of antibodies, which I'll explain in a second. If a blue line were to appear, we would have to discard the uh, results and uh, try again. Patient 2 does not have red lines forming for either IgM or IgG, thus they are negative. They are not producing antibodies against coronavirus, meaning that they have not been exposed to coronavirus. Patient 3 has a red line appear for IgG, but not for IgM. As I will explain in the next segment, this means that they have been exposed to coronavirus. They are making antibodies against it but that it is not a recent exposure. And so therefore they were exposed to coronavirus a while ago. There are different types of antibodies which can be produced during an infection. IgM, the immunoglobulin M, uh, is secreted as a pentamer with five antibody uh, proteins stuck to each other, while IgG is produced singly. There can be a difference in the time in which these antibodies are made. Neither of them are made immediately upon exposure. And so someone might have a negative uh, antibody test uh, shortly after uh, being exposed and then several days later have a positive test. IgM is the first of the antibodies produced and it peaks early within the first month after which it declines uh, to background levels. So uh, in the first month, one might be producing both IgM and IgG antibodies, and this would show a recent infection. IgG production can uh, continue for months after the initial uh, exposure. And so someone who was exposed to coronavirus months ago might still be making IgG antibodies, but no longer be making measurable IgM antibodies. And so these tests could also not only show exposure to coronavirus, but how long since that exposure.